Uh, we will uh, start uh, with an opening statement from our general manager, Kelly McCrimmon. Kelly? Uh, good afternoon to the members of the media. Thank you for uh, being available. Uh, today, we completed a trade with the Chicago Blackhawks for uh, Mark andre Fleury. And just to give uh, uh, the people on the call uh, some background on, uh, you know, two things, I guess, uh, the, the rationale behind it, as well as the process that we uh, use throughout. Uh, I, I'd begin, I guess, uh, by saying uh, these were conversations that began between uh, Mark andre and myself at our exit meetings on uh, June 29th. Uh, at that time, uh, I told Mark that I uh, couldn't say for sure uh, what we would do with our uh, goaltending for the upcoming year. Um, I said to him, I wanted to treat him professionally. I wanted to treat him with respect. I wanted to have open lines of communication. I wanted him to be fully aware of any discussions that I might have uh, with teams. I wanted him to be completely comfortable if he heard uh, rumors or, uh, you know, saw things uh, out there that, uh, you know, made him uncomfortable or made him curious that he uh, certainly uh, should feel free to call me. Uh, we spoke many times from uh, from that day uh, up until, um, you know, as recently as uh, this Saturday that I spoke with his uh, representatives for their, uh, the final time. Uh, on uh, July the 12th, I believe we spoke three times. I, I made uh, flower uh, aware of Chicago's interest. We had uh, an open discussion about that. And, uh, you know, any other team uh, that I spoke to or any other team that contacted me uh, from the time that I met with uh, Mark Andre on June 29th until uh, up to and including a new team uh, who contacted me uh, for the first time on Saturday, uh, of which I made uh, them aware. So I think that uh, communication throughout this process was very good. I told, uh, uh, you know, I told Mark on the, on the, at the exit meeting, you know, I want to be able to uh, look him in the eye and tell, uh, and tell myself and make him understand or make him feel that he's been treated uh, professionally throughout uh, this, uh, this uh, uh, time frame. Uh, with respect to, uh, uh, and I, I, should, I should conclude, uh, with respect to this morning, uh, the rumors hit uh, Twitter before I spoke to Mark Andre Fleury. We had not, uh, in fact, even completed the trade call. We hadn't begun the trade call with uh, with NHL Central Registry. Uh, we would never speak to a player before uh, you got to the trade call in case uh, things don't uh, don't unfold. So, with respect to this morning, uh, it was on Twitter before we had our trade call. Uh, completed and uh, uh, and and yet, as I've just detailed, um, you know there was uh, many discussions uh, throughout the time leading up uh, until today. Uh, in terms of the why, uh, what's the rationale behind the move? I, I think, uh, as you uh, on the call here would all know, we've been really fortunate. We had two great goaltenders uh, in our organization with Mark Andre and uh, and Robin Leonard. Uh, I give uh, both players a lot of credit. We made the decision to go with uh, with that tandem last year based on a number of factors. Uh, we um, uh, collectively won the Jennings Trophy. Mark Andre uh, individually won the Vesna Trophy. We <clears throat> had 40 wins, uh, which was tops in the NHL. We uh, tied for the, the President's Trophy. Uh, we had a successful playoff. We definitely... Uh, benefited from uh, both of those goaltenders. I think that uh, when you look uh, forward to this year, uh, I, I think that that same scenario might have been a little harder to manage. I, I mentioned uh, just a minute ago that I give both uh, Mark Andre and Robin a great deal of credit for how they handled it, but I know also uh, that these are two goalies that are both starters, and and I don't know that uh, there would have been the same appetite to do it uh, the same way from those players. Neither, uh, neither goaltender, to their credit, expressed any, uh, any concern or any issue. It's just, uh, I guess, more uh, my own observations uh, uh, with respect to that. And then I guess, uh, you know, it ties into, uh, you know, my job is to try to make our team better. And, 
you know, to do that, you need uh, cap space to, uh, to improve. And I know last year being a cap team, if we're going to, um, you know, work on any free agents, uh, you know, Alec Martinez is one that we've been working on. We're hoping to have news with respect to his status uh, tomorrow. We haven't made uh, final decisions on uh, Matthias Janmark or Thomas Nosik. Um, you know, the discussions you have with other teams about players that might be available, the free agents that might be available tomorrow. Uh, if you're going to improve your team, there's a cap space component to that that is, uh, that is definitely uh, challenging. So um, those things all uh, tie into the decision. And I guess, uh, I guess that uh, uh, at this point, uh, more importantly than uh, anything I've said so far, I'd like to uh, thank Marc-Andre Fleury for... Uh, his time in Vegas, it's uh, incredible, uh, the moments that uh, we shared with him as part of our organization. He was the most uh, popular player I've ever seen in sports. He was the face of the franchise. When you uh, think back to how it all began, the storybook for a season, the, uh, you know, the uh, you know, the passion that he has for the game as, uh, as both a teammate and a uh, player that's uh, connected to the fan base. I want to recognize uh, his uh, great accomplishments, thank him for his time, uh, for his time here. He's had a tremendous impact on our organization. He's had a tremendous impact uh, on our city. So I know for uh, a lot of people, this is a, a day that uh, definitely is filled with sadness. And uh, certainly I share all of those same emotions uh, that you do and yet, uh, I do feel, um, you know, I'm responsible to try to do everything I can uh, to put the best team on the ice. That's, uh, that's what, uh, you know, I'm doing along with the other uh, people in our hockey operations. We uh, work hard to make good decisions and uh, give you a team that you're going to be proud of. So, uh, again, uh, more importantly than uh, how I opened, I want to make sure that uh, Mark Andre uh, is recognized for all that he's done uh, for this organization. So with that, I'll uh, open it up uh, to questions. Thank you, Kelly. As a reminder to media members, please use the raise hand function of Zoom and we will uh, start with questions. First question today, we'll go to Ed Graney of the Las Vegas Review Journal. Yeah, Kelly, can you also speak to um, the control you don't have in situations like this, whether it be agents, the other team, you can't really tell them what to do, I assume, in terms of releasing stuff and how uh, difficult that is to get through times like this when you're not really in control other than what you guys do. And second part to that, in a relation to past announcements such as this, whether it be Schmidt or otherwise, do you feel you guys have always kind of done your best to make sure they're aware of it before it would hit me, social media? Yeah, thanks, Ed. Um... You know, I think with respect to the first part of your question, you know, one of the one of the one of the things you open yourself up to when you uh, when you share information is that information might uh, uh, might go elsewhere, might be used differently. I, I think as time went on, uh, we felt that was happening, so we tightened up our circle uh, a little bit at the end. But at the same time, I knew all of that going into it, and uh, it was more important to me to be open and transparent with Mark Andre than any potential risks there might be by making that circle bigger uh, than what you might ordinarily. So I'm uh, uh, really comfortable with the way we chose to do it. And uh, uh, that was a conscious decision that I made uh, again, immediately uh, following the season uh, with respect to, uh, you know, uh, how things get out. I mean, you guys are, uh, are in the business and, um, you know, certainly it, it's, it's almost now like there's rarely any uh, news a team announces. And I don't mean just our team. I mean, in sports that it isn't out there in advance. And of course, if you're the team, you can't uh, speak to things or, uh, or announce uh, uh, moves that, a team, that your team has made until they're final. And it's as I touched on uh, earlier that, um, you know, we, we can't. Um, you know, contact a player and, and uh, tell, tell that player that he's been traded if we haven't completed a trade call. There's, uh, there's just a process that you have to go through in terms of the timing of that. Unfortunately, and, and maybe it ties into the first part of your question, um, it all leaks out. It all leaks out. It just, uh, it just always seems to. But, um, you know, it's not, uh, it's not a lack of regard for the players. And again, in this situation, 
uh, you know, Mark Andre was uh, fully abreast of uh, discussions all the way through, not just in relation to uh, the team where he was ended up being traded to the Chicago Blackhawks, but any other conversations that uh, that I had previously. Next question today will come from Greg Wyshynski, ESPN.com. <clears throat> Thanks a lot. Hey, Kelly. Um, Hi, Greg. There are reports that Mark Andre does not want to play for the Blackhawks. His agent said he's going to seriously evaluate his hockey future at this time. In your discussions with him about the Blackhawks, did Mark Andre ever indicate to you that he did not want to play in Chicago or would not play there if traded there? Mark Andre wanted to play in Vegas. That uh, that never changed. I don't think that's a surprise to anyone on the call. So that was his uh, his number one preference with respect to what. Uh, decisions he might make moving forward. You know, this is a player that uh, is at the very top of his game. Uh, you know, uh, I, I believe will be a, a candidate to play in the Canadian Olympic team. So I, I, I sure think that he'll uh, uh, play this year. But those are things that I would, uh, you know, leave he or others to uh, to speak about. Next question this morning, we'll go to Ben Goats, Las Vegas Review Journal. Hi, Kelly. You mentioned, you know, not having the appetite to have both your number one goaltenders back. Uh, did you consider moving Robin Leonard as well, or were your sole focus on moving Marc-Andre Fleury? Yeah, and I think, Ben, any of those types of discussions, you know, stay, uh, stay internal. Uh, you know, it, uh, it uh, you know, it ended like it ended. We made the decision that we made, and, and that's probably all I would say uh, to that, Ben. Next question will come from Michael Trakos of Post Media. Hi, Kelly. Thanks for doing this. Um, just wondering with the cap space available, uh, how much does this set up Vegas for another move, whether it's in free agency or possibly in a trade where uh, there, there's a lot of uh, options available? Well, we'll use our, work, our resources to work to make the team uh, as strong and competitive as possible. Um, you know, there's, there's, uh, you know, there's never there's never any guarantees you're going to be able to do the things that uh, uh, you might like to do. There's a lot of factors uh, at play. Obviously, when you get to free agency, if that's the route that we go, there's uh, 32 teams. Uh, free agency has changed a little bit uh, over the last uh, couple of years where there's no uh, what was referred to as a courting period. Uh, prior to free agency, where you might have a, a bit of a feel where you stood with respect to a certain player. Uh, it now opens, I describe it, it opens with a starter's pistol uh, on Wednesday. So it's uh, a little harder uh, to predict. We'll, uh, you know, I, I might have uh, mentioned, I think the last time we did media availability, we uh, have our pro staff here in town. We have players of interest uh, across the league that uh, may or may not be part of our discussions here uh, over the next few days. And uh, we'll be uh, working hard to uh, try to put the best team together that we can. Next question today, we'll go to David Shane, Las Vegas Review Journal. Hi, Kelly. Last time I kind of asked you about, you know, Bill being so public about wanting Marc Andre to stay and Marc Andre being so public about wanting to stay. Now that it's resolved itself this way, do you feel a little bit like the bad guy in all of this? How, how do you kind of, you know, resolve that? Is that something you're okay with sort of being the person out front that's taking the brunt of this? Um, David, these are hard jobs and, uh, you have to make tough decisions. And, um, you know, I, I just, uh, really feel it's always about what's, uh, what's best for the organization. And that's what I'm trying to do. Um, you know, Bill had a really special relationship with Mark Andre. I, I do not suspect that's going, going to change, uh, moving forward. I know that, um, you know they were they were very close. Bill uh, Bill thinks uh, thinks the world of uh, of Flower, and I know that Flower has a great deal of respect uh, for Bill. But uh, you know, again, for me, um, you know, I try to do what I uh, believe is in the best interest of the of the Vegas Golden Knights. Every decision that we make is uh, is based on the same thing. Um, there's some constraints. There's some constraints to do this in a in a league where you've got a flat salary cap. Um, where it's competitive, we're a real good team. That's uh, you know each of the four years we've played, we feel we've dressed a better team than the year previous. So uh, when you have that uh, those type of expectations and that type of, uh, of standard that you're trying to reach, uh, your 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 margins are pretty tight. Next question today, we'll go to Justin Emerson of the Las Vegas Sun. 
Hey, Kelly, do you anticipate adding another goalie, whether it be through free agency or trades, or do you feel comfortable with Logan Thompson as your number two for next season? Uh, good question. We'll we'll look to add uh, a backup goaltender here, and uh, you know, between now and and uh, you know, uh, you know, foreseeable future here, in the next couple of weeks, I'm sure we'll be able to uh, uh, to add to that to add that position. Next question today, we'll go to Nick Katznika of NHL.com. Hi, Kelly. How much of a priority is a number one center? Um, you know, I, I like our centers. We've uh, we've added two centers to our team in the last uh, week who I think are going to firm up the bottom uh, half of our lineup, both guys that I think have a chance of growing and improving and developing. And, uh, you know, Chandler Stevenson, uh, did the job extremely well this year. I think his uh, performance was right on par with uh, the top centers around the league. And, uh, you know, obviously William Carlson is as good a two-way center as, uh, as there is. So um, it, it, it seems, Nick, to concern uh, people outside the organization, probably a little more than people inside of the organization. But, uh, you know, fair question. When you look around the league, there's some teams that are uh, pretty stacked up at that position. Uh, you know, we feel... Uh, you know, we, we talk more in terms of our, uh, you know, our top nine forwards or our, or our, you know, our four lines or our defense as a group than we do about, uh, you know, being, uh, feeling that we're not uh, strong enough at, uh, at any one position in particular. Next question, we'll go to Chris Matthews of Channel 8 Las Vegas. Hey, Kelly, I was just wondering, you talked about Mark andre Fleury being the face and so forth uh, of of the franchise and being around from the beginning and how he was just so beloved in that city. Can you kind of talk about this probably being your most difficult decision as a general manager in the NHL and just probably the cruelty of the business of sports to fans? Well, today's uh, not about me, Chris. It's about uh, Mark andre and, uh, and again, as I've mentioned here, uh, a couple of times, it's the nature of the job. If you want to do your job well, you have to make hard decisions. It's easy to uh, uh, sit on your hands and let uh, you know let time pass by without trying to do what you can to help your hockey team. So uh, these decisions aren't made in a vacuum. It uh, involves other people. It involves uh, you know George McPhee, our president. It involves Vaughn Carpen uh, and our pro staff. Uh, you know it's discussions that I keep uh, our head coach Pete DeBoer abreast of. So. Um, you know, I'm uh, uh, at the end of the day, the person that, uh, uh, that makes the decision, but, uh, you know, we, uh, we, we feel we're always doing what, uh, what we can to help this team be the best team it can be. And that's, uh, that's, uh, that's what I feel my mandate is. We have time for a few more questions today for Kelly. Uh, next question, we'll go to Lindsey Brown of 1140, the bet. Hey, Kelly, thanks for taking the time to do this. Um, just yep. to kind of uh, specifically ask you about your vision for the goaltending department in terms of usage, you will have to bring in a body, whether that's through promoting from within or free agency or trade, but in terms of how you guys approach, will it be a tandem style or will Leonard be expected to carry more of a traditional game load in the upcoming season with a normal slate of games? Yeah, that's a good question, uh, Lindsay. I, I think that uh, what you're seeing around the NHL is you know, next year will be a normal 82 game season. I think the days of a goaltender playing 60 to 65 games, I think are, uh, um, you know, we're moving away from that. I think when you look around the NHL at, uh, uh, you know, the usage of goaltenders and, and, and there's exceptions, there's, you know, uh, the elite, elite players that still uh, are able to do that. I think what we're looking for is a really good backup goaltender. That's, uh, that's what we want. Um, you know, we are quite comfortable that Robin is a real good starter. Uh, he'll, you know, his workload will reflect that. But at the same time, uh, you know, we want Robin to be at his very best. And, uh, and I feel strongly for your starter to be at his, at his very best. Uh, you have to have a backup that you trust that can get you wins and can allow you uh, to use your starter uh, to the best of his ability. Time for two more questions this morning. Uh, next, we'll go to Golam LaFrance in, from the La Presse. Yeah, hi. Uh, I just wanted to know, I mean, obviously from the outside, it's uh, 
it, it might be easy to, to see it as a decision based on, on Marc Andre's age and his contract status. Uh, were there other factors that came into play when, when it came time for you to decide between, uh, between moving on with, with either Marc Andre or uh, Robin? Well, I think when you go back to uh, you know, the decision that we made to extend Robin Leonard a year ago, um, you know, we, we, you know, right from expansion, we were always looking for our next goalie. We were fortunate to have Mark Andre, uh, be available to us, uh, in expansion. We knew that we were going to have great goaltending as a young franchise, which we, uh, deemed to be uh, extremely, uh, important. But from there, we were always asking the question, who is our next goalie going to be? And, and I think that's where, uh, where Robin, you know, slots in real nicely. He's got four years left on his uh, term. He's at the, the prime of his uh, career. And, uh, you know, that'll give us uh, the type of goaltending that you need to win. And, uh, you know, that's, uh, um, you know, how uh, this decision, uh, that's partly what this decision was based on. Last question for Kelly today. We'll go to Danny Webster, NHL.com. Hi, Kelly. In terms of uh, the player you got back, uh, can you just speak to Hacker Reinen, the kind of player that he is and kind of what you expect his role, whether it be in Henderson or what kind of uh, the expectations you have of him? Yeah, with, uh, with Mikhail Hacker Reinen, he will, he will remain in Chicago's organization. This is uh, you know, more of a situation where, um, you know, NHL teams have a certain number of contracts that, uh, that they're allowed. This, uh, this you know, keeps... Uh, that equal in this transaction. So he's going to remain uh, with the Chicago uh, organization, likely play uh, in the American League with uh, with Rockford. It'll be our contract, but he'll remain part of their organization. Thank you, Kelly, for taking the time today. Thank you to the members of the media for joining. We will have a full recording of today's press conference sent out shortly. Have a great day.